Today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about minimalist footwear, uh, minimalist shoes, and um, some of my favorites and some, some precautions you might want to take when transitioning into minimal footwear. So this has kind of been a new thing, like probably the last 10 years, definitely the last five. Minimalist footwear, zero drop shoes, and a zero drop basically means from the heel to the forefoot, there's no differential. So um, I believe all of these right here are zero drop shoes. So you can see like right here, the, the padding and the differential between the toe and the heel is the same. On most athletic shoes, there will be a heel height. So this is called a differential or a heel drop. And generally on men's athletic shoes and probably women's too, the differential will be somewhere around like six to 12 millimeters. So the heel will be higher than the toe. Um, this isn't necessarily super bad and some people, especially like transitioning, this can be helpful. If you're used to wearing a heeled shoe all the time, and I'm not talking like high heels, I'm talking just a regular athletic shoe with like, let's say a 12 millimeter differential. Going from that to a zero drop could kind of potentially hurt your feet or hurt your Achilles tendon if you move into it too fast because that Achilles tendon and that ankle is so used to having that little bit of heel raise in there. So, I mean, you think about it, 12 millimeters really isn't that much, but every millimeter you shift up changes your posture just slightly. So, um, and, and wearing shoes most of the time, like, like which most of us do to work, to the grocery store, pretty much any time we're getting up and moving, we're putting shoes on. And it can be kind of a abrupt change for the body and it can kind of lead to some pain if you overdo that. So. Um, if you've been using heeled shoes your whole life and um, you can look into the manufacturer, the make and see what that heel drop is, uh, I would I recommend like if it's 12 or nine or something like that to go down to like a six and then eventually down to a zero. Transition slowly and spend some more time barefoot, whether that's um, just walking around your house, walking outside, um, especially walking on different kinds of terrain and up elevations is good to expose your foot to a bunch of different things that strengthen your foot, but you kind of got to take it easy. Uh, if you're familiar with Vibram, Vibram is the one who makes the five finger shoes and these are the ones everyone thinks are hideous with the different toe slots. Um, they got sued because they were saying something about their shoes will help improve foot function or improve health or whatever. And people were basically going their whole lives in heeled shoes switching into the Vibrams and then going out on weekly runs several times a week or whatever and then eventually getting injured and then they sued Vibram when really the fault isn't in the shoe, the fault is that you transition too quickly and your feet aren't strong enough to handle that. So um, that's my precaution for you guys. If you're going to switch to minimalist shoes um, or if you've already bought some minimalist shoes recently, transition slowly. Um, keep your old shoes, wear those um, if you have to be on your feet for long periods of time. Um, for someone like me, but before COVID-19 laid me off, I was a bartender. So I'm on my feet like seven, eight, nine, sometimes 10 hours a day, never sitting down on my feet all the time. So um, for me, I had to get, I still had zero drop shoes, but I had to get some with a little bit more cushion just because being on my feet so long, uh, my feet eventually would hurt after back to back 10 hour shifts on my feet. Um, even though I have pretty strong feet, I'm always working out barefoot, just the 10 hours, 10, 10 hours back to back or nine hours back to back on the hard surfaces will kind of wear you down over time. So even if you transition and let's say you went out for a two or three mile walk, you're like, man, this feels great. Um, the effects can add up and sometimes it takes a while for you to get injured or for any pain to set in. So tread lightly. Um, now that that's over, I'm going to go over some of these shoes and um, I'll kind of tell you which ones are my favorites. So first off is the Morel Barefoot. Uh, I think it's a trail something. God, I don't even remember the name. Is it in here? Morel Performance Footwear. Yeah, not on there. Um, I believe it's like a Trail Boss 3 or something. I don't know. And this is actually an older model. So if you go on Amazon, it probably they probably will have the newer model. But I mean, you can just look for Barefoot Morels. Um, this is a really good shoe. It's pretty durable. Like the outside is, is very light, but very tough material. The bottom on this one is a Vibram sole. So 
Vibram makes the five finger shoes, but they also, before they did that, they make soles for different shoe companies. So this is a Vibram sole on here. As you can see, it's very flat. There's really no tread on there. So this isn't made for trail running or anything like that. Just normal flat ground. Uh, the, sh the sole is very flexible. So it flexes here at the forefoot, at the midfoot, and you can like roll this thing up. So look at that. Yeah, I mean, you can roll it up like this. It's that flexible, which is really good for your feet. Um, really allows them to move around a lot. Um, you can see it's got a wide toe box here, so it's not pointing your feet and it's not cramping them in there. Uh, it's very light and breathable. Um, for doing any walking or any types of activities where on your feet for a couple hours at a time, these are really good. For running, uh, I like uh, light trail running where there's not much inclines or anything, you don't really need good traction or like solid dirt trails and not muddy trails these would work well on or just running on grass fields or anything like that. Uh, if you're running on concrete or blacktop, uh, kind of going to be pretty painful, especially if you don't have a great barefoot running technique. So I would not recommend these for that. Um, just like everyday walking shoes, if you transition well, these would be good shoes to have. And they're kind of stylish. Uh, most of the barefoot shoes kind of have a little bit of a goofy, like low profile look. Like if you can see this thing's probably three inches tall so it doesn't look like a normal shoe it's very short but it is pretty cool looking um let's just let's keep it with the lower profile ones first this one has got quite a bit of use but this is a vivo barefoot evo 2 um also that's vivo barefoot i believe is the company now it used to be called terra plana they might be called either one but um, they've been a barefoot shoe for a long time um big player in the the zero drop minimalist shoes um, this one is very comfortable also. It's pretty light, um, durable. I've had these things for a long time, and although they've kind of off-colored a little bit, they've held up pretty well. Um, I would definitely go with a black one instead of the gray like I did, but uh, still looks all right. And these are kind of like my uh, fishing shoes or any kind of activity where I really don't care if they get dirty since they're kind of off-colored and ruined a little bit. They don't look too bad still. Um, just like the other one, comfortable, low profile. Um, very flexible sole. You can also pretty much roll this one up into a ball here too. So um, allows your feet to move a lot. Uh, next up would be an Innovate. Uh, this is a Bear XF 180, I think it says. Um, I've had these for so long too. I'm not sure you wouldn't be able to find these online, but they have newer models. Um, Innovate has a lot of zero drop, but they also have a lot of shoes with a heel lift. So if you're looking for zero drop, I would just double check with the Innovate ones. They're not all zero drop. Um, again, very flexible. You can, like most of these shoes are like this. You can roll them up like this. So you got a lot of um, available room for your feet to move around. You can bend that forefoot. Um, toe is pretty wide on this one, pretty nice. It's not cramping your toes at all. Uh, bottom is flat with not any lugs or anything. And, uh, Again, I don't know why I bought the white one with this. I don't know what I was thinking buying all these white shoes, but uh, style is fairly cool. Again, it's it's very short, so it looks slightly goofy that way, but it's it's kind of stylish. Um, this is a Vibram Five Fingers, and uh, I'm not positive off the top of my head what model this is either. I have like five different models of these. It's just the first one I grabbed, but uh, this one has a lot of breathability in it. So it's got holes in different spots, but it's still very rugged. Um, the main thing with the five finger shoes is they have different toe slots here. So there's toes going to individual slots. A lot of people find that weird. You know, they got a little bit of a cult following of people that really like it. I think it's fine. Um, it's not, it doesn't feel weird at all or anything. It's actually pretty comfortable. It does look slightly goofy. And I've wore these before and got comments of people like, you're horrendous, quit wearing those things. But, nah, I like them. Um, even though these things breathe pretty well, they do smell extremely bad. And five finger shoes, if you're wearing them barefoot, usually smell extremely bad. So one of the solutions is to buy socks. And the most popular are uh, Injinji socks. So that's I-N-J-I-N-J-I. -I -I. Um, they sell toe socks and like uh, skinny, whatever, light fabric toe socks. You can easily wear with these. You don't have to like up a size shoe to wear, put them in. And that definitely cuts down on the smell. And the Injinji socks are kind of cool too, and they feel kind of goofy on your feet, but you get used to them real quick. 
but they are fairly expensive. I think even on sale on Amazon, they're probably about seven bucks a pair. So um, they are pretty expensive. To get into v, v rooms, it is kind of inexpensive, especially if you want to buy several pairs of socks with it, but they are cool. They are unique. They, they don't feel goofy at all. You get used to them right away. And the toe separation is definitely nice, but they're not super flexible. Like this one, you can kind of roll up, but it is a little bit more stiff than the others. And uh, Vibram has many different styles to choose from. Um, some of them with, with basically no ties right here and it's open from about right here to the top of your foot. Those look even goofier, so prepare to get a lot of comments if you wear those. Um, this is a Innovate f Flight 235. This is kind of designed as like a CrossFit shoe. Again, I don't know why I'm picking goofy color schemes, but it's like neon yellow and black, which is it's kind of cool. Um, you know, it doesn't really go with any clothing I own, but whatever. Pretty cool. Um, it's got a little bit more aggressive tread on there, a little bit more padding. Um, I would use these if I had to run on the road. It's, it's still a minimalist shoe, but it has a little bit more padding on it. Um, mostly known as like a CrossFit training shoe. Um, definitely a stiffer sole on this. I mean, it is flexible, it definitely, and it definitely flexes like at the metatarsal here. It says MetaFlex on there. So the toe definitely flexes, but you really can't roll it up nearly as easy as any of the other ones. But uh, that's a good kind of slightly less minimalist, but still zero drop training shoe. And then going even slightly less uh, minimalist, but still zero drop is a Ultra. And uh, I, I didn't prepare for this really well. I don't know what kind of Ultra this is. Uh, this is not a generation that's out. This is older, but you can still maybe find some of these on Amazon. And there is a new version of this. Uh, it's an Ultra Cross Training shoe. Um, a lot more padding in this one. So if you're gonna do like running on the road, and this isn't really meant for running, but it, like for short runs on the road, this one has good padding. Um, Ultra has different ones for running, some with light padding, some with quite a bit of padding, but all Ultra shoes are zero drop, and all of them have a foot-shaped uh, tip there. So you can see that actually looks like something your foot would wear. It's kind of, it's more pointed where your longest toe is, your big toe, and then it doesn't, it's not really pointed, but that's the top of it. And then it rounds out slowly down to your smaller toes here. So uh, this one's definitely very comfortable. I actually wear these playing volleyball because I don't like the typical basketball shoes, obviously, or volleyball shoes. None of them is zero drop. And uh, this is kind of a good court shoe like that. It has some good lateral stability and uh, it's good all around like training shoe. Um, one I forgot to bring down here, but I'll go over quick, is any type of sandals. Um, Zero Shoes, spelled X-E-R-O, makes a barefoot sandal, and then there's just some uh, kind of like unknown or very lesser known brands out there that make sandals, basically looking like a Jesus sandal, so they have little straps. And, and the main thing you wanna look for if you're getting barefoot sandals is something with something around the back or with a strap around the heel because on sandals, even if they're minimalist, um, even if they're zero drop and light cushioned, when you lift your foot up, the back tends to fall off, fall off of your foot. So you have to flex your toes to keep that on there while you're walking. So if it has a heel strap, it's gonna hold it tight to your foot and you don't have to squeeze your toes while you're walking. And that's extremely beneficial. So if you're looking for minimalist sandals out there, um, just, I think one of the brands I've looked at is Uinta, U-I-N-T-A. Um, they have minimalist sandals. I think I own a pair of Zeros, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, there's so many different ones I've looked into. Uh, and then I've been wearing Zero Drop shoes for the last 10 years, so um, it's a lot to keep track of. But um, it is a sandal that goes up your toe, and then it has a strap that comes over the foot here, and then a strap that comes over the foot here and around the ankle. It looks like almost like a Roman gladiator type of sandal, very small sole. So any of those are great, especially for summer. They don't smell like the Vibrams or Vibrams, five fingers if you're wearing those with bare feet, but you do have to find one. If you want optimal foot function, you do have to find one that has some kind of heel loop so it keeps it secure and you don't have to flex your feet down. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for minimal footwear. Hopefully I gave you guys a couple brands and options to at least research from. 
Um, I kind of made this video on a whim, so I'm sorry if I don't know the exact model numbers, but a lot of these shoes are several years old and they're really not in circulation anymore. You really can't buy them anymore. So uh, all some of the brands here again, Innovate, I-N-O-V, and then the number eight, Vibram, V-I-B-R-A-M, Five Fingers, Ultra Shoes, which is A-L-T-R-A, -A, uh, Morel, M-E-R-R-E-L-L, -L, and then Vivo Barefoot, V-I-V-O, Barefoot, um, also Zero Shoes, X-E-R-O, otherwise um, just type in wherever you buy our shoes, Zero Drop Footwear. Um, hopefully this video has been educational for you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Any questions, feel free to leave in the comments and I'll answer those and make any follow-up videos or give you suggestions. See you later.